Hey YouTube, in this video, I'm going to be training this man on a few drills to try and make him faster. So we have Khalid the Berry, 10, 9, 9 second, 100 meter sprinter. Probably won the level five. It's been a year since he last competed, so he's lost a few things. Today, we're going to start off with A skips and B skips. We're currently working on the A skip. What's the video? Stop the video. I refuse. I refuse. So he measured out a distance of about 44 meters from that cone to this one and we're gonna time to see how fast he can run it. Set! Go! <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's just 50, 50 meters. Oh, just 50, yeah. yeah. It's 44. Shut up. <laughs> so, what do you think of your time? <laughs> I may have stopped it slightly earlier than I was supposed to, so it might. It said, we'll just give it a range. We've got 695 to 7 flat. Realistically, this is terrible. Realistically, this is terrible. Because let's say it was 60 meters, yeah. Yeah. That's an actual event. Last time I ran it, I ran, what, 710. <laughs> and foot you is now around a 610. That's crazy. We, we do have a gradient. Your start was terrible. We do have a gradient. So that did affect it. You've got, what, two weeks yeah, to, to get this back? Two weeks. Like make it, but two weeks. Yeah. yeah, so you're going to have to grind hard and fix this so this doesn't happen. <laughs> I'm sure someone wants to know. I'm going to do the same thing. I will see what I get. I'm just after recorded, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so Javon's 10 now. He's gonna do the 40 meters. Set! Go! So we've moved areas and we measured out 60 meters from this cone to the yellow cone all the way back there. And we're gonna see how quickly he's able to do that got a stopwatch here when he's ready to go we're gonna see how fast he can get it done in set go Okay, so what are you thinking? <laughs> That's painful to see. <laughs> but it's cool. It's cool. Well, I mean, we're not on a track. My first race back. I have time. You but do indeed have time. That's, that's disgusting. <laughs> we can do better than that. Of course, man. We're going to do me next and see what I get. Just, I guess just for fun. So we can compare and see the state I'm in compared to... It's 10.99 seconds, Prince. Stop saying that. <laughs> I'm 10.99, I'm 11.5 right now. <laughs> Alright, it's time for take. <sighs> Hopefully he does better than me. On your marks! Set! Go! <laughs> so what? <laughs> How you feeling, bro? I'm not. Ah! <laughs> I know the feeling, man. I know the feeling. Why it's running 12 seconds again? <laughs> Don't worry, this is why we're here, man. This is why we're here. I'm tired. So what's, what's going on? So why, why are you putting me in the camera? Why do you put yourself in the camera? It's your video. My bag, though. Because uh, because it's been on sand and dirty places. So for this session, we're going to be doing A skips and B skips. I want to try and show Khalid how to do them correctly. And we're gonna start off with the A skips. How to do them full stop. How to do them full I, I, stop. I don't know how to do them. Because he doesn't know how to do the A skips properly. So we're gonna start off with activating your hips and your glutes the same way I've shown in other videos, just to make it more obvious how you actually use them so you can try and get your drills done properly. Because you want our drills to be done with power, not so much with speed. We can add speed later, but power that should be the fundamental. 
So let's start off with activating our hips. So to activate your hips, I've already done a video on it. But you want to kneel down, make sure your posture is upright, lean forwards with your glutes just a tiny bit, and then lift up your front leg. There's different ways you can do it. Lift it up, hold it. But you just want to make sure you don't fall sideways, stay upright, and your leg just goes up. There's nothing going on from the back. It is your turn. Lift that up. The only way you can lift up is with your hips. Do you feel it? No, it's supposed to keep going up and down. Switch legs. Yeah, that's that's literally it. It's a very simple exercise. You're just trying to warm up, prepare them. I know how it feels to use your hips instead of your quads. Don't fall over. Next, you want to try and get our glutes prepared. There's many different ways we can get the glutes ready for exercise. But the way that I found that's the most effective is just to walk. And the way you want to walk is instead of just moving your legs forwards, you want to focus on moving your glutes to try and get your back leg to extend more. So it would look like this. You're going to end up walking faster than how you normally would. Not by much, and it's going to be quite energy consuming. But we want to make sure you feel the contraction in your glutes. And you want to try and contract them as hard as possible. The harder you can contract them, the more power you're going to be able to produce if you can cross that overall into sprinting. And a little bonus tip, if you want to try and be able to move away from, once you've figured out how to do this, move away from having a powerful movement but having a fast and powerful movement, then practicing turning on and off your glutes whilst walking is quite effective. And what makes this so great is you can do this every single day you go outside. Because obviously if you're going to go outside, you have to walk to get outside. If you're going to go somewhere, you have to walk to get there. So it's easy just to train and practice this and just focus on quickly firing it and then relaxing and try and move your hips backwards with that same leg as well try and get extra push and you just want to quickly feel the muscles stretch and the second you feel them stretch you just let go how's it feeling as they should be that's what we want to get so next you want to get the a skips down it's important that we try and focus on producing force into the ground, which means you want to stop. We don't want to focus on lifting our legs up, we want to focus on pushing our feet down. As long as you put enough force into the ground and we're effective with it, our feet will come up naturally. The only thing we want to do when it comes to lifting up our feet, I mean our legs, sorry, would be getting a squeeze in your hips. So just practice squeezing your hips so you can lift up your leg as high as possible. You feel the squeeze here and you just want to get used to holding that with your, your bottom leg still stable. You don't want to bend knee. You want to keep your bottom leg stable. So that when you actually go to do the any, any form of A drill or A skip, you're able to lift up high and switch high. When it comes to using the glutes, these are the main movers in bring, bring your feet down. Every other muscle that is in the movement, like your quads, is only supposed to be supporting you. The force is produced from the glutes because what happens is they're used to make sure that your foot lands underneath you whilst your quad just acts to straighten out your legs so if you're doing this drill and your legs straightening out it's going to happen anyway because that's how you're supposed to do it if you're doing it with your quads your quads are going to resolve your legs straightening out and that's going to happen naturally but we don't want it to be straightened out and then you're going to land in front of you because what you want is your foot to land here here or here not out there. If you land out there, you're gonna have to you're gonna be always striding because when you're actually going to sprint, your feet are gonna be like this, which means your back leg is gonna have to carry forwards, and when it's here, it's gonna be able to produce force. What we want is our foot to go up, straighten out a bit, but it's gonna fall backwards, and we're able to instantly produce force so we can decrease our ground contact time. So before you even try to focus on decreasing your ground contact time with relaxation or anything else just make sure you land underneath your center of mass because that's the easiest way to get to take off a few milliseconds from your ground contact time without really having to do much work so you lift up with your hips and you fire down with your glutes up down up down you want to try and put as much force into the ground so you hear stop so you don't want to just go like that you want to not hear tip tippy tap steps you want to hear loud and powerful steps
Okay. Those. Everything that was wrong. Those were skips. <laughs> those are literally skips. Okay. Okay, so knees up, one knee. That's how it was. So, first of all, this knee. Make that straight, not too straight, just a bit of bend, but not too much. Lift up your leg. Yeah, like that, that's better. Lift up this leg, you want to feel the squeeze in your hip. Do you feel it? You're kind of leaning back. You want your upper body to be in line with your legs. Straighten up, kind of squeeze your glutes there. Straight, the forwards does hurt. Okay, good. And switch. Looking stable. Try and put more force into the ground. Make putting your foot down the focus. Yeah. Try and make <laughs> try and switch faster. The floor's flat. It's not. It kind of is. You noticed it's, uh, it's even look at the fence mate. <laughs> it's flat. Yeah. Definitely not going upwards. No, definitely not. Nope. There's no force in that way. No force. No force in that. And as he said, it's not speed speed can come later. It's got the speed Power. You're leaning back a bit. Oh. Watch those arms. Go again. Don't want this arm straight, want it bent and up. Don't strain it. Wanna force it back. Oh, it's the flash like that, That's yes. I just need my arms to flow in it. <laughs> as long as my shoulder goes up, <laughs> it's fine. But cool. Why is there a spider on my phone? My finger. There's a spider on me. Wait, hold up. His left leg is so weak. His left leg is so weak, you know. Have you seen it? Coach, I need to ask you now is. Where do I get the power from my left leg from? The power? Is it in the force or...? Okay, what feels weak? The whole leg is the whole just weak. The specific part, I mean... You know, you, have, have you seen that episode where Quagmire, yeah, he's just with one hand, yeah, and his arm is just bolo and the other one is just weak? That's what my legs feel like, man. <laughs> the, the easiest way is you need lateral plyometrics so you can build up the entire base other than the gym training obviously you need lateral plyometrics that's not going to take two weeks that's not going to take two weeks at all uh, other than that it's just doing the drill more often as you get more used to it you're going to be able to produce more force whilst doing it so you can have louder steps yeah. travel further more power your arm is still yeah I know yeah, but other than that, it's just better than how it was before. That one thing is going to take me like three weeks, four weeks. Wow. What a beautiful man. What a beautiful man that is. Look at him. Just having a casual stroll in the park. Oi, oi. So, these skips are very different from A skips. The point of A skips is to be able to produce force going down. When it comes towards sprinting, it's quite similar to your first contact with the ground and when you're coming off of the ground. B skips is everything other than that. It's when you land on the ground, well not actually, more than just that, it's when you're coming down to land on the ground and when you're trying to come off the ground and then you just glide back forwards. The way you do that is with your glutes and your glutes only. That's the only real movement you're doing. Using your hips as well to drive your foot forwards and backwards. Backwards being a bit harder because it's easy to move your, use your hips to move forwards. But you just want to move your leg backwards, not with your quads, but with your glutes. You want to squeeze them and then your foot's going to go back. And then you're going to go off of the ground instead of using your quads and then coming back. Because if you do that, you're going to hit the ground with your heels but if you use your glutes your foot's gonna reassemble with your ball of the balls of your foot landing on the ground so that you can push off and 
do it properly. And if you're able to do that properly, you're going to be able to improve your stride length beyond where it is right now. You want to come closer? No, bro, do some B skips. Or we'll just get into position. Come back. Just do switches. Okay, stop. The problem here is you're not really gathering momentum. There's two things you want to be doing when you're doing the beast kids. You want to start off with tiny steps, but as you start to go down further, you want to try and produce more force, which would mean you're going to have to bring your back leg further back than how it normally is. So you're going to go from tiny steps to medium steps to big steps. And you're just going to, as you go, get more air time as you take more steps. So try and practice that. You're going to spend a lot of time on the ground, but that's fine. You need to be taking more steps backwards than forwards, basically. It doesn't matter how far forward your foot gets, because the ground contact should be where your center of mass is and where your foot ends up behind you. <laughs> what? So are your legs. How are you faster than me? <laughs> I love that question. The last one was better, but the problem is you're focusing more on landing than you are on going forwards. A skips are a movement that focuses on you getting height. B skips are a movement that focuses you going forwards. Vertical force and horizontal force. The A skips is vertical, the B skips is horizontal. So we want to focus less so on producing force the second your foot touches the ground, but more so on producing force as you're trying to come off the ground so you can go further. Don't come back. Come back. Come back. How old are you? Five. So, to put the A skips and B skips into sprinting, it's important to understand when they come in for the sprinting form. So for the A skips is obvious, it's when your foot touches the ground and it's when the other foot is in the air. But B skips is less obvious. It's when you're going to switch feet. Because when your feet is up like this, the goal is to get your foot from this position to this position in sprinting. And when you're up here, you wanna what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna force down with your glutes and your feet, when your legs gonna go to start straightening out like this. This is natural. And if you want to get your foot from here to underneath you, you're going to have to use the B skip where you fire from your glutes and your foot's going to come and you're going to land underneath you. And then from there, you're just landing underneath you. You still need to push off. And to push off, you're going to have to do what you learned from the B skips, which was to extend your leg so your foot can go further. And then that would be exactly how you mash the A skips and the B skips into sprinting. That's the entire T of it. And another thing with the A skips is once you come, once you're doing this, obviously you just extended your foot, but you need to recover your foot. And this is where A skips come in back again. To recover your foot, you don't want to just have your feet 
just fall out like that. You want your feet to come in like a Z. And when your foot's behind you, you want to recover it in a similar fashion. So your foot comes up instead of just driving forward, which will take more time. And we'll also be able to decrease your ground contact time, be able to get your foot from down here to up here in a smooth and fast fashion. Nice little cake break. That was a cake. It's beautiful. I'm not even a cake guy like that one. That's the video. Send that video. I'm about to devour this cake. Did you just litter? Oh no. You're gonna get that idea, man. You don't know about this one. So we're gonna do one more where he's going to try and incorporate pumping power into the ground. Khalid, power down and back. It's the same distance, 60 meters, just like before. And we're gonna see if just with that alone, he's managed to improve his time. It may not happen, which won't be too shocking, but if he, if he has, that'd be really good. Set. Go. On your marks, set, go. So there's two things I wanted to mention about this video. First of all, yeah, it was just a bit of fun. It was me and Khaled playing around, seeing how we were doing. He, he just came back from not training for a year. So he just wanted to see how he was doing. I just threw some of my stuff in too. And this was also a little sneak peek at what I post on my Patreon. Um, this is actually the first, this is actually a kind of replica of the first um, blog post I made on sprinting on Patreon where I go over these two drills in a lot more detail. I've actually made that um, post free. So if you want to be able to see why I was saying all that stuff and understand it better and try and use it to improve, then go ahead and check it out on Patreon. The link's going to be in the description. And I know one person that I've helped with just one day of the coaching, it wasn't even that long. One person who I helped go from, um, I think it was low 12s to like 11, seven. With just this technique, there, there's probably some other stuff he was doing as well. But to be able to make such a big jump with that, we just go to show how impressive this can be if you can get it down. And... That's from his experience as well as my own. I, the only reason I actually shared it is because it worked for me and it worked for him. So if it can work for two people, who's to say it can't work for you?